Think back to the early 90s when we had Genesis versus SNES, then to the late 90s when we had PlayStation versus Nintendo. Then to the early 2000s, when it was a three-way battle between the testosterone box, the weed machine, and the purple lunchbox. Already in this generation, there was a lot less friendly competition between consoles. So many games came out on all, or at least two of the consoles, and advertising campaigns were really focused on just the games or the consoles themselves, and not so much how one was better than the others. Hey, big guy! <laughs> Been there long? A new legacy is born. Ready to for everyone. Then in the mid-2000s, Nintendo was like... <laughs> and PS3 and Xbox 360 duped it out. Both consoles had a few exclusives that everybody knew, you know, Halo, Gears, Resistance Uncharted, Metal Gear Solid 4, then there was the B-tier stuff like Fable, Crackdown, Ratchet and & Clank, and Little Big Planet, and a bunch of other pretty dang good games, despite maybe not being super mainstream. The current generation has seen a few exclusives, but so many of them have popped up on the competition's platforms that they're really only timed exclusives. One of my favorite games of this generation was Sunset Overdrive, but that's on PC now, and Insomniac is owned by PlayStation and is balls deep in Spider-Man games. The only Halo that's not available on PC now is Halo 5, and Halo 4 is coming soon for sure, and I'm sure eventually 5 will come over as well, so what does Xbox have? Well. When I googled Xbox One console exclusives, I see a bunch of games that are also available on PC. PS4 absolutely dominated in exclusives, and if anyone ever asked me which one they should buy, the clear winner is PS4 hands down, and with new consoles on the way, if you've got someone that wants to get into gaming for cheap, they'd be wasting money on Xbox One. Unless they really, really want to play Forza, Gears, and Halo instead of these. Now we've got the Xbox Series S and X versus the PS5. The PS5 has these bad boys, and the Xbox Series has Halo Infinite, Hellblade 2, some kind of Fable game, and a bunch of Xbox One games that are already also available on PC. Also, all those other games I mentioned are also going to be on PC. They did just buy Bethesda, so you can guarantee that Skyrim will be coming to the Xbox Series X. Jokes aside, I think this is great solely for the reason that we might maybe get a new Vegas 2 or another Fallout game that's similar in tone and style, and that's great. It makes me very happy when good video games are made such as these. However, judging from how Microsoft has handled a lot of their exclusives in the previous generation, even if Xbox does get a timed exclusive Fallout or Elder Scrolls, that means eventually it's gonna be on everything else, just like Cuphead and Ori. Xbox is making all the money with Game Pass right now. Game Pass Ultimate is 15 bucks a month and gives you over 100 games on console and PC and now has the added benefit of the xCloud. Xbox is becoming more and more of a service, while PlayStation is still sticking to being a video game console first and foremost. Compared to a PC capable of running games in 4K at 60 frames per second, it's much cheaper, simpler to use, and already has a handful of fantastic looking exclusives lined up. Console Wars just ain't what they used to be. The three major platforms are all doing barely different things and offering different services. Sure, Nintendo still thinks that people actually enjoy using friend codes, but aside from that, their first party exclusives are always good and Switch provides console power in a handheld. The PS5 has powerful, incredible looking first party exclusives, and Xbox is offering tons of games at a low monthly price across multiple platforms. It's not really fun to pit the consoles against each other now because it's always gonna be the same every generation from now. Nintendo is going to make a weird console that's really fun. Xbox and PlayStation are going to make the same console with some different games on each one. And PC is going to get everything except for a small handful of exclusives from Nintendo and PlayStation. But they're going to get everything from Xbox. PC is always going to have a higher bar for entry though, both in terms of price and know-how. But in the end, it's typically the most well-rounded platform. We're never going to get another Sega does what Nintendo don't. We're never gonna have Crash Bandicoot rolling up to Nintendo HQ to chastise Mario. It's over. It's all in our heads now. Just like Bugsnacks.